everybody. Welcome back to Bill Bites. This is episode number five. It will drop on uh, May 17th. We're very excited to talk with Josh Grunig of Zilberstein. But before we get to our interview with my co-host Warren Etheridge of the Warren Report, I just wanted to say that uh, we have one last episode coming, but we've got lots of other programs coming up. And I'm really excited about the programs this upcoming week. We're going to skip our regular Tuesday Divanathon filmmaker conversation and instead the following Sunday, March 17th, I'm sorry, May 17th, we are going to have a conversation with uh, Daniel Daniel is co-writer of Unorthodox, the hit Netflix series. Everybody's talking about, and we are definitely get into the juicy details. He was born in Olympia, but has been living in Berlin for many years. The film is based on uh, a book of an author who also lives in Berlin, who left Brooklyn, and I'm really excited to have a conversation with him. So please sign up and register for that May 17th, 1 p.m. Zoom. Also, next week, we're going to talk with and Zoom in with Avi Schiffman. Avi is the young Mercer Island high schooler who, at age 17, created a COVID tracking system that has been used all over the world. Millions of hits millions of interviews, and I believe he was just invited to speak at the UN General Assembly. So we're going to celebrate a young kid in our community, and, um, and we've got lots more coming up. So check it out at sjcc.org, or go to our Facebook page, Seattle JFF, for Seattle Jewish Film Festival Ideas. So without further ado, I want to welcome our interview today with uh, the Zilberstein's owner of the bakery and delicatessen up in the Pinehurst neighborhood. Uh, Josh Grunig is joining us. And I'm really excited about this because first of all, it's in my neighborhood. And I never quite expected that Pinehurst would have a Jewish deli and bakery with delicious, delicious food, bagels, challah, babka, you name it. So there's so many wonderful things that we're going to be talking about. But today, obviously, and in part, this has been a series to talk through the sort of soul of the bagel maker and whether or not Josh was ready for us to kind of delve into what that means in terms of I sorry, the Second Avenue Yiddish Theater that is my Bubba's Yerusha, and Yerusha means inheritance. And I really think that something that Josh has to say is about the inheritance of a Jewish food soul and the, the things that he's been cooking into his food and his family recipes. And I believe maybe we could just start off, Josh, by asking you, can you tell us the story behind the name Zilberstein? Behind the name? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry, you were, you were breaking up. Our, no uh, worries. The, uh, oh yeah, absolutely. So, so the name Zilberstein is my family's name. Um, our, that, that part of our family emigrated from Poland. And um, so when they went through Ellis Island, they were like, Zilberstein, that's, that's too much. You're a Stein now. And, um, and I've heard this story and I've actually, I met an, I've, I've met a lot of people that have reached out, like someone reached out from uh, like Kansas or North Dakota or something. They're like, our, our name's Zilberstein. And so um, in the US there's, there's a lot of silvers and there's a lot of steins and they're not all necessarily silver steins, but that's just an example of how a very ethnic Jewish name, it becomes Americanized. And, and so, um, and I just thought like, you know, let's, let's make the internet really difficult for people and spell stuff really, you know, in a difficult way. <laughs> I mean, we, we're like, we don't do anything easy. So, um, but you know, more importantly, it's like, let's just reach backwards and look, you know, I, I think just even in our name, it's like, how can we, you know, reach for, for the past a little bit and pay homage to, to my family and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And so, and I just love the name. And he's, I mean, just to have a Z in a name is, is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of where the I name I love one. I think, I think the Seattle Times said you don't have to be able to spell it or say it, but you can taste it. And so, oh, nice. That, yeah. Yeah, I love I love that because I do believe it's very it's a very evocative name of of an era pre Ellis Island, I guess is what you'd say. Yeah, absolutely. So, although like to tasting, tasting the URL is a lot harder, but that's okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Josh, it's so nice to have you here. I, I finally got to uh, try some of your bagels. And I, you know, what's really interesting about the series is that we've spoken to a number of, of uh, bagel makers here in Seattle. You're the first who actually started as a baker. <laughs> so you bring yeah. a, yeah. a, a <laughs> level of expertise to this. And we're talking about a serious level of, of expertise. So if you can, you told us about your family history. Can you talk about your baking history? Because it's pretty impressive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've been, um, so I've been a professional baker since 2006. Um, and I went, um, I originally went to college for engineering. Uh, and I'd, I'd always been good at math and science. And so I'd been told since I was like 10, like, oh, you'll, you should go in engineering. And, you know, having a Jewish mother, obviously, you know, <laughs> go into the sciences. So, uh, so I, I went to engineering school, really was not into it. Um, so I did, I did a semester, then I stopped. And then I went into, uh, I started doing a lot of art and painting. And it was kind of like, well, how are you going to pay your rent? And you know, during that time, once I had moved out of out of home, I uh, started cooking for myself quite a bit. So I got interested, like, oh, maybe I'll go to culinary school. Um, but I had also, uh, I had, you know, I was like three or four years in, and I really wanted to finish my BA. And so I, I kind of just chanced upon this little baking school in San Francisco, and it was it was only a, a ten week program or a twenty week. It was a twenty week program, so it's called San Francisco Baking Institute. <laughs> And they divide it into three parts. So it's bread, uh, viennoiserie, which is all laminated doughs, and then pastry. And uh, the first day I walk in and you make a baguette from beginning, from mix to shape to bake, all, all in the first day of school. And it was like, I was, uh, I was just seduced. I was absolutely seduced. And I was like, this is all I want to do. I know there's another 20 weeks of this program, but I just want to shape baguettes for the next 20 weeks. <laughs> and uh and so that really just kind of started my uh, my love affair with bread. And um, I've worked uh, I worked in Napa, I worked in Palo Alto, um, and then in in 2012 I moved up to Seattle to work at the Grand Central. Um, yeah. So I worked there for a year. I really wanted to get an experience working at a larger uh, commercial bakery. Most of the places I worked at before were pretty small, um, and so I moved. We moved up here, my wife and I, um, and then um, and then we had our uh, we had our daughter was born, and uh, and it was like, well, who's who's uh, making better money and who's going to stay home? And my wife was making much better money, so it wasn't it wasn't much of an argument. So uh, so I stayed home for the first year, and then um, I started. I basically started as a pop up, um, and so that was in uh 20 2014 yeah so i started as a pop-up and then um have have grown that out to doing farmers markets and doing wholesale um and we really specialized in croissants when we were standard bakery before right. um and then i've always really had this hankering to open a jewish deli um because i was really inspired by zingerman's that's in in arbor michigan and they they grew their business, they grew a bunch of uh, complimentary businesses. And so they, they started as a Jewish deli, then they, then they opened a bakery that supported bread for their deli, then they started an ice cream place. And so I've always been really interested in that business model and not so much mm -hmm. in the uh, Panera, like let's open 40 factory, you know, that's, that's not really my interest. So, um, so this idea started kind of rolling, rolling around in my head for a while. And at the same time, uh, got really interested in making bagels and had a hard time finding bagels in Seattle and, and was like, I, I guess I could, uh, I know a baker. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know someone. So I kind of figured, you know, we started tinkering with that. And, um, and so we opened the Jewish deli. Uh, it's now just been a year. So we opened in May of 2019 um, and we remodeled our old space and put in a hood and a cookie uh, kitchen and then, so we basically stopped doing standard bakery, became Zilberstein, and now we're uh, primarily make. I mean, our main bakery right now is bagels. That's obvious. Like that's kind of our main thing that we do. So, and then obviously okay. holla. So yeah, it's interesting to me. Like Pamela and I are both uh, East Coast, and so we're familiar New Yorkers uh, and have I think our own 
image and impression and for yeah. panel, it's a smell of what a bagel is, right? And it's interesting that your your former place was standard bakery. And I would say your bagels are not standard uh, at all. Yeah. There's something, they're very different. And like, they appear like a New York bagel. They have the crisp uh, out exterior of a New York bagel, but there's, there's a lightness inside, which feels, uh, it feels different to me. And I was wondering if you could explain that, that process, your approach to the bagel. Um, yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't grow up in New York and I, and I, uh, have been to New York twice in my life and I've eaten bagels there once. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, and that was kind of, uh, initially, so that, that was four, four years ago, I, I went to New York and I took a bagel class and, um, and that was like, I, I, for one part, took the bagel class to learn about bagels, but also just an excuse to like, go all over New York and eat bagels. Right. And I would have to say the one thing, the one takeaway that I got when I was in New York was, no one can agree on what a great bagel is. Like, every, it's, it's only what it's not. You know, it's, right. it's so much like, it's, that place is not correct. But like, to get people to, to, to find, like, and so, cause I talked to all these different people and it was like, well, go here, try this place. That's the best place. And, and so, um, so when I came back, it was like, well, I should just make bagels that I like. And mm -hmm. so, and hopefully other people like them too and they enjoy them. And so, um, so kind of to answer your question, like we, um, it's a, it's a three day process for us to make the bagels. We use a sourdough starter um so we make the sourdough starter on one day the next day we we do the ba we mix and shape the bagels and then they sit in the fridge uh a minimum of like 18 hours sometimes up to 30 hours depending on um it kind of has to do with like uh we'll use them over the course of two days if we have extra sometimes they they don't do well after 36 to 48 hours um but sometimes we'll do bagel you know so so if we make bagels on tuesday we'll bake them on wednesday and thursday so um as long as they're kind of holding up so um uh because uh and then because we don't um uh i'm sorry like because we use the sourdough starter it does have a lighter crumb and that we also like because we let them rest um and you know again like i don't i don't know what makes new york bagels so dense i like i i didn't really learn how to do that and so it kind of freed me to be like i like a, an airier lighter crust bagel because i like airier crustier bread and so so i guess i kind of modeled it after that um that effort and so um and and we certainly like i'm very careful that we're not like we're making new york bagels like that's definitely we don't we we don't promote that because I I don't I don't want to get pitchforked by anyone like it's not you know like we certainly get a lot of people that that come to the deli and are like this isn't a, a New York deli and I'm like well we're not in New York and I'm not from New York and you know so well there's uh, aspects if you wouldn't mind um, there's aspects of what you do and put out in your menu that feels very much like a New York deli you've got absolutely pastrami sandwiches and and people have been raving about some of your your other foods other than the baked goods but also you talked a lot about um previously about your sourcing and i'm wondering how does the sourcing from some of these pacific northwest local markets change the flavor of a bagel if it does oh absolutely yeah i mean i think um so the the two main flowers that we use are cairn spring flower that comes from mount vernon and then we use Smalls flour that comes from Walla Walla. Um, so, um, I mean, there's the, like there's a there's a whole interview we could talk just about flour. But the best way that I try to describe it to people is uh, in two parts, which is the first part of being that they use uh, heirloom wheat varieties, so they just have different flavors. And so by heirloom, I mean like if you think of a tomato you have an heirloom tomato. So there's all these different kinds of tomatoes and wheat grain is the same, where there's all these different types of wheat grain that are heirloom varieties and they all taste a little bit different. Mm. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect is when you fresh mill flour, it tastes fresher, fuller flavor. And just as much as like, if you buy some Folgers 
some Folgers ground coffee that was ground probably in the 80s versus a fresh ground locally roasted coffee, it's going to taste slightly different. And so, so those are kind of the two, the two ways I like to describe fresh flour. So um, that definitely influences the flavor of the bagel. And, um, and then aside from that, like they're, they're both whole grain flours where they, they mill the wheat germ and the wheat bran into the flour. And so that also, inf it, it makes it a, a, a whole weedier, grainier flavor, which I really like. And it's also healthier for you. It's better for your digestion. And because we use the sourdough starter. So, um, so all of that is very intentional. And so it's kind of the, um, it's all of the, it's all of the ingredients and the process. And then at the end, like we get something that tastes really good, but it's kind of the, it starts with the ingredient and, and where we're sourcing it and how, how intentional we are about that. And then ideally it comes out tasting really good, but it normally always does because when something is local and fresh and it doesn't travel very far and it's not meant to sit on a shelf, it always tastes a lot better. So. And it does. It does taste great. And, and so I, I have put aside any New York snobbery about that. Don't worry. <laughs> so I'm, I'm loving the bagels. I love oh, absolutely. The absolutely. I, I love the fact that Seattle has actually opened up the possibility of different kinds of bagels. So there are different days that I can appreciate a different kind of bagel. Absolutely. Uh, but I'm curious, uh, as a baker and as somebody who now knows bagels well, what do you think is the best way to evaluate which is best for you? Like, do you, if you get a bagel from another place, do you eat it whole? Do you eat a lot of cream cheese, lox? What, what do you, how do you determine if it's a good bagel or not? Oh, how, oh, I see. Um, so, I mean, this, it kind of, th that kind of goes back to like my attitude about bread in general, which is like, uh, you know, in France, if you can't make a baguette, then like, that's it. Like, the, you know, so, so it's kind of like the, the most basic bare bones form of that thing. And so like, I personally don't really like bread with stuff in it, like olive bread or cheese bread, because the bread should stand on its own. So it, when I go to a place, I get a plain bagel with nothing. I just get a plain bagel in a bag and I tear it open and I like, uh, I stick my nose in it. Like I just literally, I just like, there's the Japanese bread smash lady. <laughs> like that, that's me that's what i do and then i'll uh, and i'll eat some of it too but it's kind of so it's like you kind of uh you just you know just do a deep dive in into the bread and taste it and then um so i don't i don't know exactly what i'm looking for i just know that like if it tastes good and um if i can't stop eating it that's usually a good indication so I, I, I don't really operate with like really strict uh, guidelines about what I, what something should be like other than it should be good and you should want more of it. <laughs> so those are, kind of, those, you know, I don't have like a checklist or anything, so. I think, I think those are great standards. I wanted to ask you about, uh, and, and partly you validated something because I was having this conversation yeah. with a friend. It's like, when I get a bagel for the first time, I like to just bite into it and then yeah. smell it and really look at it. I don't need any stuff getting in the way. Um, I wanted to ask you about the everything bagel because yeah. uh, it, was, it was a very nice bagel, but it has some different flavors in the everything uh, than a lot of everything bagels. So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we're sacrilegious for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> well, we, put, we put a little bit of caraway in ours. Mm -hmm. um, which I like. So, um, I mean, we, we use dried onion, dried garlic, sesame, uh, poppy and salt, which are, you know, those are kind of the traditional. And then right. we add a little bit of caraway. Uh, sometimes we add a little bit of fennel, you know, and, and the fennel is like, when I, when I grew up in the Bay area, there was a bakery, uh, Acme bakery and they, their yeah. baguette, they do a seeded baguette. So the seeded baguette is fennel, poppy sesame and then i and and so like and so that mix with the, like the little bit of fennel to me is is like really i really like that but i've also had outraged people <laughs> outraged like i like I, uh, I i like i did something you know actually bad uh with the fennel so um but sometimes like we don't have fennel so we don't i i don't know I mean, it, it has to have those four. It has to have the onion, garlic, poppy, and sesame. And then we also use uh, Jacobson salt. So that, that 
uh, it's a sea salt and it's a little, um, it's a little earthier than your standard like commercial salt too. So um, yeah, so we, you know, we like to just make everyone mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mad about the bagels, mad about, I mean, I really, I, I really uh, appreciate it because in addition to the, uh, the interior being a little lighter with that extra flavor, I feel like it's a lot peppier bagel, right? Like I really felt yeah. after eating it, I felt lighter. It, it, it didn't feel like uh, the undertaking that some bagel, bagels can feel like. So I really appreciate that little. You were, uh, you were like, ugh. <laughs> so like your bagel, yeah. Yeah, there's some agree, bagels you know, that like it's like Thanksgiving and it's nap time. <laughs> so I would I would definitely agree with Martin. And by the way, I used to sling espresso right next to Acme uh, for Alice Waters at her. Oh, cafe, nice. At Cafe Fanny, if you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know exactly but, what you're talking about. So yeah. I definitely. So as somebody, uh, Warren, I'm going off script here. Um, <laughs> if, as somebody, <laughs> as somebody who has doesn't eat flour. I learned at age 45 that I have to be very specific about my flour intake. And I yeah. will, I will uh, eat challah on Shabbat. I will reserve it for a damn awesome bagel like yourself. <laughs> but I guess that what Warren said about that, that lightness, but I'm curious to know how, what are things that you hear in your, in your restaurant? Some people are delivering bagels at, at people's doorsteps, right? Right now. Yeah. You've had a year of having people walk into your, into your new brick and mortar space. They're trying foods maybe they've never tried before. Babka, your bagels. What kind of comments are you getting? And my question was also about, is, has anyone asked you for the gluten-free bagel yet? That's what I wanted to ask. Uh, but, yeah, I sense it's about to come. <laughs> no, I mean, well, you know, you it's, have to it's, put the kibosh on it right it, now. No, I mean, it's interesting. Like, um, I would say we get we get asked for vegan stuff more than we get asked for gluten free stuff because I I feel like that bell has gotten has gotten rang so often, and we get people that ask, you know, and and I'm, you know, my my position about gluten free is like, you know we we are in a facility that processes weed and therefore because the people the people that are that are gluten free for lifestyle versus the people that truly truly have gluten allergies like you shouldn't even come into the deli right. and i think i think people with celiac like realize that if it says bakery in the name that like so um let's go know, for the lifestyle people yeah so for the lifestyle people like you know we do a flower we did a flowers chocolate cake um and we did uh you know, we do macaroons sometimes, um, but kind of going back to the flour, you know, a lot of times what I tell people is if you, if you try local whole grain flour, A, that's fresh, B, that doesn't have chemical stabilizers in it, because industrial flour, if you look on, if you look on the label of uh, like some King Arthur flour, it says like contains riboflavin, vitamin D, iron, all this stuff. And so during the commercial industrial flour milling process, all of those nutrients get taken out of the flour and they have to put them back into the flour. And so those are all naturally occurring vitamins and minerals that are in the flour. And so I usually tell people like, if you are having allergies to gluten, probably evaluate how much processed food you're eating. Also evaluate like uh, what type of flour and bread you're eating. Because if you eat like naturally leavened sourdough breads, it's going to affect your gut a lot differently. And so, so that's kind of, I try to like, I try to uh, steal those lifestyle people back over. The, well, they, I would agree. I ate the whole salt bagel right after you handed it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I did not. Feel feel great. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's, it's a, a miracle. miracle. You're cured. You're I'm cured. cured. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what is what is next? Is, is there any experimentation, or do you feel like you're you're good? I mean, you talked about the the Zimmerman's model or something like that. Are you are you sort of like standing pat on bagels and have something else in mind next? Is no, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, everything is in a holding pattern right now because of because of COVID, right? So, like, what? I mean, we we're we're doing okay business wise. Um, we did launch a, a bagel club. So we, we are doing home delivery of bagels also. Um, so we're, t we're doing like weekly uh, subscriptions. We're delivering 
from West Seattle. We're doing the east side a little bit. We're trying to grow that out a little bit, but um, a lot of that is a a lot of that was a product of because people can't come to the deli, and we want we want people to stay home. So when things open back up, like I don't I don't know if Bagel Club is going to hang on and continue as a thing, or if people. I mean, I I kind of think it a lot of it will continue because people like convenience. It's like we you know when Amazon is offering one hour free shipping, we're not going to go back to like I think I'll wait a week and a half for my <laughs> shipping. Right. So it's, you know I think there's an aspect of that. Um, but uh, no, I mean, uh, I guess to answer your question, like we, uh, the deli before coronavirus, like when we had the dining room, when we had people coming in, you know, um, we don't have a big seating area. And that I would say that's kind of uh, not necessarily a question we get the most often, but definitely a, a complaint, which is, uh, why is this, why is there so little seating in this place? And I've, I've certainly, we have a, a big communal table. It sits about 10 people. And then we have some window seating, uh, some like window bar seating. And a lot of people come in with like a party of four and they're like, you expect me to sit with these strangers at this communal table? And it's, <laughs> uh, you know, if you, if, if you don't get it, you don't get it. And I can't, like, you know, so, um, you know, we're, we, we are trying to encourage community and I've, I've had, like people upon people come and say, I met a neighbor that like lived two doors down. I lived here for, for 12 years, 10 years. I never met this person and I met him here at the deli bumping into them. And I realized that this was my neighbor and now I have a friend. And so, and that, so, so that kind of connection to our neighborhood and our community is, is really, really, really important to, to what I'm trying to do. Um, and so, uh, so right now it's like survive, survive the current <laughs> state of affairs. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we uh, like, I'm just happy that anyone comes. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, long-term, like, um, you know, maybe, maybe have more seating. I don't know, but you know, it is, are we ever going to go back to a, to a, a 200 seat, Jewish deli is that ever going to be a format that is successful again because of like no one wants to sit near anyone even inside a building now so so I don't know what's the best way for people watching this to support you at this time yeah I mean the best way is to join the bagel club um, we we our website has an online store um, so you can buy uh, meat by the pound you can buy bagels you can come to the shop and pick up or you can have us deliver it as well um and um just just give us all your money that's the easiest way so <laughs> we've really come full circle here john we've, we've made it easy i mean you, just, you click 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 and then you know empty your bank account it's easy <laughs> warren well, any I, other I, questions I, I would suggest in in lieu of the communal table at your place right yeah. that bagels still do build family and community in a great way uh people can support you obviously by buying buying bagels yeah. or doing the bagel club but i'm trying to make a habit now of buying more bagels than i need and actually going to meet my neighbors by dropping some off uh, and spreading that love out there uh, in some way because i think a good bagel brings people together and you have been doing a marvelous job making a bagel that is actually different uh a lighter pops with flavor and uh, I am greatly appreciative. So thank you for all you're doing and thanks for bringing actual baking back to baking bagels. Right. Thanks. <laughs> well, thanks Josh so much for being part of Bagel Bites and uh, we really look forward to uh, continuing to come to your spot. You're one of the few bagel makers that actually has a storefront that's open that you can pop on by and see the process. So I recommend everybody head up to Pinehurst, check out your hours and head up to the window. Your staff is awesome and your bagels and your food's terrific. So uh, congratulations on your year anniversary. I wish it were under better circumstances, but we'll be there to help out. And you've got a great parking lot. I think there's a future in outdoor <laughs> movies and your, and your parking lot. So There's so right. much parking. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it thank you crazy. so much, Warren. After again, that, that URL is Zilberstein's, just like it sounds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so with that, thank you, Warren Etheridge of the Warren Report, and thank you, Josh of Zilberstein's. Uh, you can't pronounce it, but you got to taste it. So head to the website, everybody, and thanks for Bagel Bites. Take care. Okay, thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.